Welcome back to Advanced Scala. I'm Daniel, and in this lesson, we're going to dive even deeper into pattern matching. All right, I'm in the IDE. You know the drill. Right click on the lectures.part1 advanced scala and right click new scala class and let's create a new scala application. Let's call this advanced pattern matching. Let's make this an object and extends app. All right, make sure this is an object. Right, switching to presentation mode. All right, so as you know by now, pattern matching allows you to decompose values that conform to a given pattern. So if, for example, I say val numbers, which is a list of integers, and uh, let's just say it's a list with one, and um, I create a pattern match expression and assigning that to a value called, let's say, description, equals numbers match. And we talked about this in the beginner's course, but I want to start with a very fancy pattern, which is case x or head colon nil, which is the colon colon infix pattern, which is very fancy. And uh, let's say that this um, does a just a print line statement and uh, saying uh, the only element is head. All right, in case whatever, we just don't do anything. All right. So this is a complex pattern. We're going to dive a little deeper into how these patterns actually work. But currently, we know that the only structures available for pattern matching are either constants or wildcards, like we saw here, this underscore wildcards case classes, tuples, and some special magic, like above. All right. And uh, in this lesson, we will learn to how to make our own structures compatible with pattern matching in the event that we might need to. So in 99% of the cases, the standard pattern matching patterns will be enough for what you need. But in the point one percent of the cases where you do need your own pattern matching, this lesson is for you. So let's start with a small class that for some reason you cannot make a case class. Uh, let's call this class person. All right, with a val name, string and a val age int. For some reason in your API, you cannot make this class a case class. But you still want this class to be compatible with pattern matching, as in many cases, you want to decompose members like name and age. All right. So how do you do make your class compatible with pattern matching? Well, you start with defining an object called, let's say, person. So we define a companion for the class person. And we define a method, a special method here called unapply. And we pass in an argument of type person. And the return type should be an option with the type of the result that you want to decompose. So if you want the name and an age, you need to pass in a tuple. So the name is a string and the age is an int. So in this case, we want to create a sum with the tuple of the person's name and the person dot age. OK. Having this written, we can then say val Bob equals new person with um, name Bob and the age uh, 25. All right. And then we can do pattern matching with Bob. So if, if we say val greeting equals Bob match, then I can say case person with a name and an age. And uh, the return expression say as an S interpolated string, hi, my name is N and my and I am age years old. All right. So having declared and implemented an unapply method with the argument 
the type of the thing that we want to pattern match against, in this case person, and with the return type, an option with a tuple with the things that we want to return after the pattern matching, then the compiler is happy for us to do pattern matching on Bob. So if I write, if I print line greeting, and then I try to um, run this code, taking a bit to compile, then I should see, hi, my name is Bob, and I am 25 years old. All right. So let's see. Okay, the only element is one, of course, because uh, we've printed this from the description and saying, hey, my name is Bob and I'm 25 years old, although person is not a case class. So how does this work? Let's break it down a little bit. So when the runtime does pattern matching, it goes through some steps. So if I do Bob match case whatever, the runtime says, okay, this is a pattern called person with a name and an age. All right. Now, look for a method unapply in an object called person, so this is where the pattern is actually defined, and that returns a tuple with two things. Have I found it? Well, yes, because the code does not compile otherwise. All right, so this returns a thing, so in this case it returns a sum. Is this thing empty? Well, it's not because the option actually contains a value. Well, in that case, the pattern actually matches and then the runtime actually evaluates this expression and it replaces the decomposed values here in the returned expression. If for some reason this pattern matching unapply returns a non-empty option only if the person's age is bigger than 21, then for age 25 it will be a match, but for age 20 it will not. So let's modify the unapply saying if person dot age less than or equal to less than 21 then return none and else sum with person name and person age well in that case because Bob is of age 20 the unapply method returns none which is an empty thing and then the runtime says is does this actually contain the two things that I want well no then the pattern match does not work okay so in this case the pattern match should throw a match error which is exactly what happens. All right, so this is a match error because the unapply actually returns an empty object. Now, I don't know why we would want that in practice because we could always if guard at the pattern matching level, but hey, I'm not the API designer. So if you do need that, you can. Now, um, the shocking thing here is that this person pattern here has absolutely nothing, nothing to do with the person class. So if I, for example, rename this object person pattern, pattern, you see that this case thing doesn't work anymore. But if I rename it to person pattern, it suddenly works again. So basically, in order to create a custom pattern usable in pattern matching, all you need to do is create this singleton object, name it whatever you want, but in practice we name it the same as the class that we want to pattern match against, so we make this uh, a companion of the class, and with a proper unapply method, with a single argument of the type that you want to pattern match against, and returning an option with either a single value or a tuple of values that you want to return after pattern match. We'll see later that option is not the only uh, possible uh, return type for unapply, but we'll uh, dive more in depth into that later. All right, so let's rename this uh, to person because we know that it has no connection with the person uh, class itself, but we'll rename this to person for best practice. Now, the nice thing is that once you start defining your own pattern matching, um, there is an itch to define even more patterns. So. Uh, for example, in the person singleton object, we can define multiple unapplies. So we can overload the unapply method. So if I say def unapply, not with a person argument, but with an age argument, right? So an int, and uh, I'm going to return an option string saying, um, sum with the value um, if age less than 21 then minor else major all right 
then I can use this unapply method by saying, uh, let's call this legal status equals um, bob.age match. So notice that we're matching the age here and we're going to match it against the person pattern with the status that we return after the unapply. So Bob age is the first argument to unapply. So th it's this guy. And the status is what's returned after the unapply. So it's the string, which is either minor or major. And uh, let's just print this out. We're saying um, my legal status is uh, dollar status. All right. So if I print line uh, legal status, then I should see uh, that uh, Bob's legal status is minor uh, in the case that um, his age is 20, but I'm going to say age 25 so that this pattern match uh, doesn't crash the program. All right, so it's going to say major, right? So, hi, my name is Bob and I'm 25 years old because this pattern suddenly matches again. Now, Bob age can match against person status and saying my legal status is major because the unapply method with the Bob's age returns a sum with major because the age being passed to unapply, as in Bob's age, is bigger than 21. So again, the unapply method that we defined here takes the argument that's being pattern matched against, in this case Bob's age, and returns a string which is the thing that we are then processing after pattern matching. Okay, all right, let's take a little break and do a little exercise. Create your own pattern matching for the annoying case where you would want to match against integers, but instead of uh, matching against actual values, we're, we're gonna match against multiple conditions. So normally we would write something like val n, which is an int, is whatever, say 45, and then we can say math property equals n match. And instead of putting in cases with uh, integers, we want to put cases with conditions. So we can say case n if n or case x, let's just not shadow the uh, n naming. So case x if x is less than 10, and then we say single digit, case x if x mod 2 mod 2 is equal to 0, say an even number. I think you get my point. It would be very annoying if you had uh, a couple dozen conditions and you said case x if condition 1, case x if condition 2, case x if condition 3, and so on and so forth. Even worse or even less readable would be uh, if x pa passes condition 1, else if x passes condition 2, else if x passes condition 3. We want something more elegant. So I want you to devise a uh, little pattern matching solution, a custom pattern matching solution for these conditions. So take a moment, pause the video, and think about how you would implement this exercise with the new custom pattern matching technique that you've just learned. And I'll be here with the solution in just a few moments. All right, so I'm curious to see what you thought, but my take on this exercise is to create singleton objects with unapplies for each of those conditions. In practice, if you do need singleton objects with unapply for conditions, you usually name them lowercase. So uh, if I say object even with lowercase, and I define an unapply with int, and let's say an option boolean, and here we would say if arg is uh, even, that is arg mod 2 is equal to 0, then sum true, else none, because we don't want the pattern to match in this case. And in a similar fashion, I'm going to create an object called single digit with a def on apply, with an argument of type int, which returns an option 
boolean and saying if arg is less than 10 actually let's be completely correct let's say arg is greater than negative 10 and arg less than 10 then sum true else none okay we can do all kinds of uh, functional tricks like sum uh, arg filter whatever all right, so we can uh, we can do some uh, fancier functional programming here, but I want to be really explicit here. Okay, and the way that we would use these singleton objects here would be to say case single digit with some condition. We don't really care what the condition is because the pattern doesn't match if the number is not single digit. So we can really put anything here in the option. All right, and even with whatever, with an even number. So I should be seeing no property here to the console because these two patterns don't match. So if I run this, oh, I haven't printed anything. So let's print this out, math property, property, and then run again. So I'm seeing here no property to the console. If I have the number say eight, I should match single digit, so I should see single digit here in the console, of course. Now, a language supported option that would make this code look even better because this option here is pretty redundant because we don't really care about the value stored in the option. We might say some false here anyway, and the pattern would still match. So uh, an alternative and um, simpler and um, cleaner way to write the same code is to say that unapply just returns a boolean and uh, let's just reduce this to the condition all right and remove these and just say that unapply returns boolean and here when we actually use the singleton objects here we would just remove the result inside and just call single digit like that and the compiler will interpret that as a single boolean test so um, boolean equals okay let's just delete this line over here as well and if i right click and run this i'm gonna uh, get the same result all right so single digit all right, so a quick way to write uh, tests for pattern matching is to define singleton objects with unapply, which return Boolean, all right? The advantage of this approach is that you can reuse these Boolean tests in other pattern matches. So if you do lots of pattern matches in your code, you might want to reuse these conditions. But the disadvantage is that if you have lots of conditions, the code for defining the pattern matching tests is getting a little bit too verbose. So notice that this approach, this technique might or might not make sense for your code. And starting this lecture throughout the rest of this course, we're going to start balancing out the pros and cons of various things that we write here in this course. Because once you start getting more advanced, very few things will end up being so black and white. For now, let's take a little break and follow up in the next video where we discuss infix types, unapply sequences, and our own custom types for unapply. I'll see you there.